this video is in support of and honoring those who are currently protesting Wall Street. The strength of our species has always lain in our ability to cooperate. We were never the fastest, nor the strongest, nor the most numerous, and without cooperation our intellect would never have come about. As we developed language and social abilities, our brains needed to swell to accommodate, and we became what we are today. If intelligence had somehow developed in individualist isolation, it would have been little more than a parlor trick rather than the magic that raises skyscrapers and battles death. There's a reason why early tribal societies were as a rule egalitarian, much more so than modern society, despite all those noises we make about equality and the pursuit of happy dreams. But we've willingly bought into the idea that we need superiors to lead us about by our noses, the same idea liberalism initially critiqued but then was remolded to re-establish and reinforce by the introduction of a supposedly fair and egalitarian capitalist market mechanism and philosophy which, whilst more equitable in its initial phases than the preceding feudalism, through accumulation of capital power leads down the same dark path to servitude. We've been convinced our individuality lies in our right to consume, and our freedom in the ability to choose the product we wish to purchase, as if freedom were a recent invention, gifted to us in bright wrappings by smiling and soulful corporations. But instead, that supposed freedom has distorted our intellectual culture, perverted our desires, and destroyed our efforts at creating a truly humane, a truly human society built on our innate strengths, reason, cooperation, and empathy. Instead, we crouch resigned at our supposed primal nature, unfulfilled and sickly, our care entrusted to a fiendish doctor interested only in our continued ailment because it is his means to power over our bodies and our souls. The fall of the Soviet Union was meant to herald the end of history through the ultimate, the total victory of liberal, capitalist, free market, consumer democracy. What it did was rid us of one perverted fiend bent on the domination of the human spirit, thereby exposing more clearly for all to see the second enemy, the enemy within, naked evil at the core of modern capitalist exploitation and thereby at the core of modern society. Without rivals, the last fetters were shredded, the last restraints shattered, and the intrinsic greed and hunger of the elite, those that hold the true economic power over governments, over corporations, over us, the people, us, the workers, whether blue collar or white, as if such distinctions had ever mattered in the first place, that power was unleashed and it will not be sated by five times more wealth, not by ten times more, not by the forty times more wealth that the top one percent in the US holds today, given its share of population. It can only be satisfied by total power masquerading as freedom through consumption, while famine of education and famine of nutrition and famine of opportunity fells children in the very heartland of freedom and the very heartland of capital. First came as always the demagogues like Glenn Beck and the faux fox movements endeared to such luminaries of reactionary rhetorical violence like the Tea Party. But now something different is happening. A new voice is rising, as old as humanity but reborn in the fires of injustice anew. Where less than 10 years ago we all strode pacified following dear leaders and viziers of voodoo economics and we laughed and derided and mostly ignored the supposed filth, those stupid hippies that stood up to corporate globalization at G8 summits, tacitly supporting the violent suppression and harassment of protesters. Today we protest Wall Street. Today we shout enough. Today we resist, not for the sake of resistance, but to take back our freedom, our humanity, and our future.